every town looks essentially the same, as I was saying. Other than the coastal town on the western side of the map, which looks more like Adobe. So you know you've got Clint Eastwood running around there somewhere, shooting Mexican gangs and playing them off each other. But I suppose that's just like the Old West ghetto. Well, I think all of the Old West was a ghetto. Anyway, this is all off topic, of course. In this part, I actually, if not at this particular moment, but take a wrong turn. So I'll have to try to find some bullshit when the time comes to, to cover my ass with that. But hey, this is a big level. Give me a break. And they don't give you a map in this one. That, that's one of the things that I found a little bit frustrating about this game. As cool as I thought the level designs were in comparison to the old ones, you never get a map. You get a key, you get a big key, but there's no map and compass, you know, the, the staples. Although I guess this was the time of experimentation, you know, you have the Castlevania formula getting shook up by Simon's Quest, and you have Zelda being shaken up by, well, this. Ugh. Finally have the power to kill one of those fuckers with some degree of ease. And I really felt obliged to let him know. Not that the fireballs made any difference. In fact, fireballs might work against those wizard guys. There's something people can try. I don't know why I never thought of that. Ugh. I was determined to try to kill one of those bastards, but... With those flying heads shooting loads at you. Just becomes that much more of a chore than it already is just to catch the fuckers. And they're tough as shit, too. There's no excuse for how hard they are to catch. And then just ignore him. Just, just ignore him. He's trying to be a ninja and failing miserably. Succeeding more in being a douchebag. Although most enemies in this game succeed at that in one form or another, like these guys. In fact, these levels should just. They're, they're like the breeding ground, the gathering place. They are the Stonehenge for douchebags. Not to the degree that. Ghosts and Goblins is. I mean, you can't get worse than that. I mean, if if there's a game that has every cock stain known to enemy bestiaries in Nintendo games, it is Ghosts and Goblins. There is no, lo no lower tire to get to. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the simple fact that uh, Link is using heroin throughout this game is also a big indicator of, you know, the fact that this is in the projects. This might as well, I think this is just like the south side of Chicago or something. Hyrule, we now know it is an actual geographic location. The first game is Detroit. The second game is the south side of Chicago. And Link is the rich white guy who thinks it's a good idea to go wandering around in there. So what does that make Ganon? Hmm. Yeah. All of that was my absolute genius navigating. And once again, a complaint of where the fuck is the map. Don't even get, I don't even give shit about a compass. Just give me a map. I know the levels aren't that big, but in levels where you run into quite a few obstacles, you know, platforming, pits, lava, Indiana Jones type of shit, the least they can do is give you some idea of where to go. 
fighting them in close quarters. Or I should say running from them in close quarters. It's such a bitch. I really should have done this level on a day when I had more time. Then I could have killed all those fuckers. You, you notice how Iron Knuckles move when they run? They, like, barely take a step. They're so either heavily laden or they're trying to be sneaky, because they look like Snake when Snake runs in Metal Gear. They look gay as fuck. Even though Snake is a badass, a certifiable bad motherfucker, when he gets running, he does look a little questionable. That's why you crawl around, or, or as in the case of Metal Gear Solid 4, crouch and move. Oh god, and especially don't go upstairs. That's just the worst. But this isn't Metal Gear. Still, it seemed appropriate, given how Iron Knuckles move their legs. Now you know I'm reaching when I'm talking about how gay an Iron Knuckle is when he moves. But we're almost to the end of the level. Joyously almost to the end of the level. Where you get to fight a boss that really shouldn't give you any trouble. But for some reason, sometimes, not this time, thankfully, I just suck at him. This is the King Hippo of this game. So I know at least somebody who would absolutely love to fight him. This fat fucker swings a gigantic bulbous ended cock at you, and that's basically it. He's... doesn't have really any pattern necessarily, he just... I mean, there's some timing involved. He throws that shit at you in specific intervals. So basically, when he spins that shit, jump. You know, it'll take a second for him to spin it completely, and then after it retracts, after his erection subsides, then you go in and slash him. This is where your actual jump ability is extremely useful. In fact, jump is one of the most useful spells in the entire game. Now, I could be wrong, but I think once he gets lower on life, he might get a little more aggressive bodily and try to impose his massive bulk on you in a completely sexual fashion. You want to avoid that, because that guy does a fuck ton of damage, even when you have shield on. But overall, he's not a particularly difficult boss. He's kind of like a slightly more dangerous version of the first boss. And after that, you claim your prize and leave. <laughs>